The first part we're going to talk about is understanding the box model. And this doesn't have to do with grids specifically, it just is a CSS and HTML thing. And it's how the style sheets apply to the web. So it's important to, to understand that on as far as the browser is concerned uh, and CSS is concerned, everything on the page is a box, plain and simple. It's just a box and you get to control how big it is, um, how much space it has around it and inside of it, and whether it has a border. So whether it looks like it or not, every element on a web page is a box. And what I'm going to do is show a video, and I'll make this presentation, I guess, available for you guys. I think it's going to be kind of big to put it on Blackboard, um, of Firefox rendering a web page. So hold on, let me um, get this to play. So you see here it goes, and it's just drawing all these boxes on a page and figuring out how to space them out and put them on a page. And that's really all the browser is doing, and what you're writing with your CSS is telling it how to do that. All right? And sometimes it has to end up redrawing things and going around. And this all happens very quickly. This was just done, um, recorded by someone, uh, I think, who works for Mozilla or something like that, uh, to do it. And there we go, and then you get the web page out. So really, all that content there is just a box. And here's one, this is with um, in a, the web developer toolbar where you can, in it you can sh have it show um, the block level elements, and so these are the block level elements for the page, but also it just shows you, you know, how the browser sees them in terms of boxes, it just sees all these, these boxes here. Um, and so for the most part as well, what you're doing when you're making your page is you're defining your content by these boxes with block level elements like the ones you see here. Uh, you know, div being the, a generic one to put stuff inside of, the h elements for your titles, uh, and p elements for your paragraphs. And, you know, and those three types of elements are the most common ones, and of course you have to add lists and other things like that. But uh, really, all of those are just boxes to your browser. So it's important then that you know the box model and the box model is the model that CSS uses to determine how big these boxes are and how they get placed out so that's how the web layout is, is based it's based on the CSS box model and the grid systems we're using are no different so what we're gonna focus on is how the box model applies to determining the width and the height of an element and because in the in, when you're talking about layout that's really the most important part of the box model um, so let's look at how a browser determines the total width of an element using the box model. So right now, let's say, and, and this this stuff in here, by the way, this is CSS. I would write. So this might be under you know p, and then width two hundred pixels. All right. So everything you see here, just assume that it's going to be added inside of some kind of style that we would give something. So that's it. So when you give a width element, that gets the width of the element there. All right, that's fine and dandy. Total width is 200 pixels. Um, so let's add one with padding to it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, with padding now, that adds to the, uh, in addition to the width. So the padding is something in addition to the width setting. So now I would have width 200 pixels and padding right and padding left. So my total width now is going to be the sum of those. 10 plus 200 plus 10 or um, actually this is wrong here. Uh, should be uh, 220 pixels. Now let's say I add some borders. And this one is right now. Um, I have a two pixel border now. The borders go on the outside of the padding. So we have our width here, then we have our padding, and then we have our border. And you have to add all of those up together, the 2 pixel border, the 10 pixel padding, the 200 pixel width, another 10 pixels of padding, another 2 pixel border, and so we get that 224 total width for the element. And this is why sometimes when you're doing these things, you'll see you, if you if you add a padding to the wrong thing, or you weren't you know thinking about it that you know your layout breaks all of a sudden, or you add a border, even a one pixel little border to something, and all of a sudden you have problems. And that's because it added one more pixel of, of border to the layout. Okay, so um, now let's add in margin right, 
and margin left. So we add our margins in. So that adds again to the total width. So now we have 254 pixels wide because we have our margins here. And by the way, margins you are always uh, transparent. You can't see through their, their uh, empty space. Then we have our borders. Padding um, lets you see the background color. So background color of an element fills in like this, up to all the way up to the border. All right, so if you want to see more of it, you can add padding and you see more. So usually the general way when you're um, looking at do I use padding or margin, because sometimes it doesn't seem to make much difference. If I want some more space at the bottom here, if I had padding bottom or margin bottom. But in general, the idea is adding padding is giving space inside the element. Right? So space between the content and the border. And adding margin is outside of it. So usually margin is done if you want to space it out between that and whatever comes next. You would use margin. And if you want space between the text and, let's say, the border of it, you would use padding. OK. Um, so there we go. So that's how it is. You have to add the margin, the border, the padding, the width um, on both sides to get the total width of an element. So that's the, the full width is that combination of things. And the same thing applies to our height. So um, we get here <coughs> the um, border and the margins and everything added in, and we get our total height. You know, in this case, it would be the same since I made the height 200 pixels as well. Um, the total height in the same way. Right. Now for the grid system, we're going to see later, the grids are really focused on widths. So you can kind of mess with the height and it doesn't change things too much, you know, uh, add padding at the top or the bottom. But the left and right, if you add it in the wrong place or at the wrong time, yourself uh, can mess with the what's done with the grid. Okay, so that's it for this first one on the box model.